So, Prof, we'd love to start this one on a, on a high note uh, with, uh, yes, we've opened up the economy. After two years of COVID-19, we've been hardly hit like any other country in That's Africa right. and even mm -hmm. around the globe. Mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, we'd love to hear your views on what you think, because uh, many Ugandans have been happy, they have been waiting for this. Why should they celebrate or should they celebrate about the reopening of the economy and what lies ahead? Well, well, I think in my view, the starting point should have been the lessons learned from the COVID thing, actually. Mm -hmm. Certainly, there are positive things and negative ones from this COVID. And I must say that uh, if you look at the post-COVID now, what lessons is such one thing the government must learn from this COVID is the issue of people. Mm. Whatever policies you come up with, why coming up with policies is for the good of the people. Okay? Mm. So how has COVID affected the people? And who has been affected by the people? I mean by the by the COVID. Which people who have been affected by COVID? Uh, the number of people, of course, in the setup. So after the people, then the economy. And the, if you look at the economy, agriculture. Why agriculture? We have been able to feed our people throughout this crisis. That's mm. the biggest lesson. Yeah. I, and I think the government should know, should, should not beat around the bush when coming up with these policies, target agriculture. And if you look at how much proportion it goes to agriculture these days, it's quite small. And yet throughout this, agri throughout this COVID, agriculture has supported the economy. Uganda does not import food, okay? And certainly we are supposed to be even exporting food, okay? So throughout the COVID process, we have not suffered. We have not imported food. So it's a lesson to the government that they should not ignore agriculture. There should be too much support to agriculture because throughout the, the COVID period, our people have been able to feed. Now, it's quite unfortunate that when you want to go to the villages during COVID time, Matoke, for instance, was so cheap. Yeah. Very cheap. And the people there suffered a lot. Mm. Okay. Again, I'm going back to agriculture. Government should not take in agriculture. The government should start even putting more resources in agriculture. Where? In the rural areas. Put all the facilities, facilities to enable these people in rural areas live comfortably in the rural areas. They don't, I mean, throughout this period, two years, people have had them moved from rural to, to urban areas. Mm. Okay. Now, if you can make the rural areas comfortable, come up with the facilities and so on, that, 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 to me, that would be number one thing. That's the biggest lesson, and that's, that lesson should assist the government to put more resources into water agriculture. Now, which resources am I talking about? Which areas? The feeder roads in the rural areas. I know the government has done a lot about the infrastructure mm. that you can move from one town to another town. The, the, the infrastructure is basically from one urban area to an urban area. But coming from the urban area to the rural areas, I don't think it's good, okay? okay. It's not good at all. Mm. So government should not, should, not, should not stop at only the the infrastructure from the town to town. Now it's time from town to other small towns in the rural areas, especially those which are feeding this economy. Okay? I mean, if you move from here to from Masaka, go to Chamun, Namukaka, they, they, there are two pi pineapples there. There are many pineapples there, but they're being wasted. Can you imagine that every person is come takes about two is it is it eighteen months mm -hmm. growing pineapples and the federal ends up with the two hundred shillings. Yeah, five hundred, yeah. Yeah, I mean how? Okay. You, you you make that economy strong. 
And pineapple is only by the outside. Our pineapples are very good in this country. Okay. Mm. Those are the lessons. Okay. So continue, continue f- investing in infrastructure. Mm. That's go- okay. But also go deep in the rural, what, in the rural areas. Those areas which are feeding which are feeding the economy. Mm. We are able to export pineapples, able to export. Watermelon is everywhere these days, actually. But how much is it, actually? It's too cheap. They buy them at 600, 1,000, even less than 1,000 little areas. So how are they benefiting? And I said at the beginning, government should be working for the people, transforming the lives of the people, okay? It's not enough to say we are putting roads. Roads, yes. But which roads are we talking about? Main ones, that's fine. But now go deep in what? In the in the rural areas, okay? The issue of the water also has not you cannot forget that issue. In the rural areas also. Yes. And I, I do appreciate regarding electricity. I think this government has done extremely very well in that sector, energy electricity. Mm. At least and as you know, what the people when you talk about in this country that is the there is excess supply of electricity, people don't believe that. It's true, yeah. there is excess supply of electricity. Yeah. So the question now is, how do we make our people now start demanding more electricity, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. to assist them, okay? And, and the government should be serious on this one. Because when you talk about now, every day I go into rural areas and, and they see charcoal, I mean, and they, they are destroying, yeah, 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 they are destroying our environment, okay? Okay. They, I mean, the, the environment has gone actually. Now, this situation now is on now. Now, time for government to do what? To make sure the people in the areas are do what? Make it cheap. And I'm happy to note that the the, this, the ERA A, mm. has made it cheaper. It has to come up with the yeah. affordable yeah. rates. And I'm sure going forward, they'll be even lower. I'm sure about that actually. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Discussing the two years of COVID 19 proof, mm. what economic opportunities has COVID-19 come with, which we have not embraced yet? Which we have not embraced yet. Yeah, the opportunities. No, 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 no you see, let me see, say this again, that whatever policies you come up with, whatever lesson we learn from this COVID, nothing will happen in this country until two things may be happen is the corruption whatever policies we are talking about you may debate in the parliament come with good policies and so on we learn these lessons and come up with good policies the, the, the policies are very good by the way that that the government is coming up with but how come the the hardly working i think the, the issue is about the corruption two things the government expenditure mm. public sector expenditure is too much okay only by cutting 50% of the government expenditure, mm. divert that money to other sectors, to agriculture, to tourism, and schools, and so on, mm. you will greatly benefit. So, I will say, I'll say this again, corruption. Too much money goes into corruption in this country. Now, you may sit in the cabinet, you may do this and come up with good policies. Will they work? They will not work, but they are good policies. So even now, I suggest a good policy now. It will not work until the government seriously, genuinely thinks about what? About corruption. And also the excessive government expenditure on the public sector. I mean, it's too much money that goes into that. Okay. So how do we move? With those two things there, when, when they are still there, no, we can't move. So we must think about this now. Put the money. Okay, the issue of the tourism, yeah, it's okay. It's one of the good things, a lesson from this old COVID, that uh, when you look at the tourism, the tourist sector has been dead actually for some time, and yet it's one of the good sectors. But there are both three sectors: industry, agriculture, uh, and tourism and service, sec- service sector, which yeah, includes service. also tourism. Okay. The service of course, in terms of employment, employs most people. But now it has been badly what affected. There is too much unemployment uh, because of the what? Because of the COVID. So that's what we are saying, that uh, the government has to come in, come in in the what? 
in the export sector. The, the real sector, that's the real sector, agriculture and so on. We have to do something also. The lesson again, exports went down. What about imports? Even imports went down. We have not been importing. Mm. Because even there, I mean, can you imagine that uh, uh, getting now a new car in Uganda is very, I mean, it's very difficult. Mm. You may go to those people who are importing them, they, but they can't get a new car. Of course, the second hand cars may come, but a new car it has been difficult. They have been coming into this country because of what? Because of the COVID. And that's another lesson. Our exports have gone down. Our imports have also done what? Gone down because few have been coming in. So government as the policy must emphasize industrialization. Mm. I'm happy to note that the government is trying its best. Uh, parks have been open, Namave is there, Ginger is there and so on. They are coming up. So that's another target area to industrialize this economy. Mm. Okay? Because once another customs of a comes yeah we are going to face the same same situation there be no exports and there be no what import so what do we do let's emphasize the what the industrialization and once you do that of course it's going to assist us in terms of what of employment the revenue government revenue is going to do what to increase uh taxes of course because uh, the, the, the taxes are very high, I know, but, but genuinely they, they should be like that because the government has got to run, okay? So, in the world of widening the tax base, let's emphasize the industrialization. Because from the COVID experience, we have seen that uh, our exports have gone down, and yet the imports also have gone down. So the solution is to do what? To industrialize. Mm. Going to start making them. So, if there was a year, yes, you're speaking about industrialization. I, I'm not forget. I, I'm not remembering the year, but there was a year when you, uh, actually you emphasized on government uh, changing and uh, uh, actually making some changes in the, the education system. Yes, we would love to be industrious as a mm. country. We open up industrial parks, but are the masses and citizen citizens? Uh, industrious because our education system, in fact, be told from nursery up to university, it's not industrious and mm. it being disastrous at the end that we are opening up parks, we are actually spending huge sums of money, mm -hmm. but at the end, the masses are not prepared for that. With a long journey in school, they end up going into parks or those industrial parks needing more time to be groomed and what. And that's right, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. we do uh, have to say yeah. about that. Yeah. You, you that's the uh, education sector. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Just yesterday and every day I hear people uh, about this government. Uh, and this is not a criticism, it is yes, a positive yes. criticism actually yes. on the government. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday I think it was the, it was the Minister of IT, Bariomusi. Yeah. Yeah. Bari yeah. He was Bari talking about to, uh, that. Uh, there was one university, Makai University. Now there are many universities. There are very many schools. The, the, the issue is not the number. Yeah. The issue is the quality. Mm -hmm. What are they teaching? What is there? What's the quality? Yes, it's one, one university. Now there are about 50 universities. But what are they teaching? Is this new university adding anything new okay, mm. to our people? Is it, you are right, there's something wrong with our education system. Yeah. Okay. And again, that's COVID thing. It has taught us a lesson, actually. That just going to school without any practical skill will not assist us. Okay. Mm. So certainly, we government had another lesson. They should think, think about the, our education system. They should not emphasize the number of universities. They should emphasize the quality. Okay? Mm. The issue is not economic growth. The mm. issue is development. Yes. This yes. is transform the lives of our people. Mm. So if you have got too many people, too many too many universities, with too many graduates, mm. is it is it uh, is that assisting us to transform the lives of our people? the lives in our communities, the answer is no. 
as you are correctly have said, people do graduate, end up with no what, no employment. Why? Partly because this education they did acquire from schools was not matching the needs of the society. So certainly a lesson, good lesson, let's do something about the education system of this country seriously. Okay? And there are quite a number of ministers there. They should be sitting down seriously. Mm. I'm, I'm happy they've talked about now changing the, the education. I mean, is the, the Oliver one? Yeah, the new curriculum. The, the new curriculum. It into effect, Except yeah. that now it has come, the, coincidentally, the, mm. the COVID is there. I mean, at, at, it was introduced at a time when the COVID is coming, but it's a good idea. But the emphasis is not number. The emphasis is about what? Quality. Mm. So we have to change the quality, the education curriculum. It annoys me to see that uh, people, our children, even younger ones, they, are, they, they learn something which is, which is not practical at all. Okay? Uh, why should we really? Yeah, general knowledge is fine. We need to know what's happening in other countries. But, but you find that people spend so much time learning about the geography of America, the geography of Canada, and so on. And yet, I was here. We don't even teach it, actually, okay? Yeah. So I think curriculum should change and emphasize the needs of our people. Mm. So the question of technical, because technical now, because now people are saying that maybe have more technical schools. Yes. We need maybe more technical schools, but even then, within the university system, okay, and I'm happy to note that, you see, when you look at the, the, the our doctors, grand doctors, are quite good, because they go to the field, they go to the field, okay? Mm. Yes, in some of the universities have now introduced this internship, mm. true, internship, but for how long is it to so one, one month? So what do you learn from that one, one internship, one month, okay? And I think more time now should be devoted to internship. Practical internship, actually. N n not just see, for the sake of learning something from there, okay? Just like the medical school are doing, actually, yeah. Engineering should be the same thing also, okay? Yeah. Mm. So, you're right, we need to change the education system. Yeah, Prof, me as a, uh, a journalist and a person who has followed uh, things, or oh, I always follow things critically, mm. actually follow different countries and uh, in terms of the comparative politics and comparative economics, I sit down and ponder times that uh, as you've mentioned, uh, economy versus the education system, don't you think Prof wasted money and time? Yes, but be told industrial parks have been opened, they have been constructed and we must applaud government for that. Yeah. And do you agree with me that it is time versus money wasted uh, when even the generation we've groomed for many years in terms of the education, we've killed it and we are taking them into an industrial era uh, whereby we are still even lagging behind. Uh, other countries are in the, uh, in the fifth revolution. Mm. Don't you think we've killed the citizens by taking them into an era whereby they're not uh, comparative or, or even competitive and uh, like I don't know whether you speak with me in terms of wasting resources yet back here the citizens have been killed by the education system. Yeah, 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 right. I mean, entirely right. The education system has killed uh, our people here. Mm. But I mean, going forward now, what do we do? We, we can't just continue lamenting, okay? Yeah. Our education system, okay? No. I think the thing is to have, to have people in the government mm. being serious and start on this matter serious lecture, okay? Mm. So that uh, we con don't continue losing. Agreed, past is the past, okay? We have lost, we have lost, okay? But moving forward now, what do we do? Let's do the right thing, actually. Okay, mm -hmm. getting to previously, actually this year, uh, President insisted that yes, the economy must be reopened, either uh, there is a full vaccination of the entire uh, population or not. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is this question that always comes to me, yes, we faced tough times posed by COVID-19. Do you think the masses should celebrate or they should uh, sit down or they should uh, actually wait for tough times ahead? Because many have started celebrating, you as an econ uh, e economist, do you think there is need to celebrate amidst the economic crisis? 
I, I don't know what people are celebrating about, actually. The opening up of the economy, it was bound to happen, actually. It was even longer or long overdue. So government, we thank the government for opening up the world, the economy. But most importantly, I think, is now the people. Because the government is there, but most importantly, the people ourselves, what do we do in these circumstances? Economy has been open, it's very good. It's changing the, the mindset, basically. Yeah. The, the issue, when you look at our people, mm. they, they are looking at government to provide everything to them, okay? Mm. I, 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 whenever I hear something like Nabanja money, I, I really feel bad actually, okay? And people, they were there waiting, mm. waiting for 100,000, which got finished a long time ago, okay? No, there should be a mindset. Later, people start moving, they say people start working actually. What we need from the government is just to give us appropriate environment only, a conducive environment, okay? But we have to work. Starting from ourselves, actually, the education system. We have talked about education system. Provide the appropriate education system, and people start working. And the people sh should stop thinking about government. That the government is going to give them whatever they want. Actually, okay, mm -hmm. just provide a conducive environment, mm -hmm. but but not these handouts. I hate the handouts. Actually, okay. Yes, there are people who have been affected by this COVID during this time. Badly affected, actually. Mm -hmm. So the government can come up with a package to assist. To assist whom? For being affected. I mean, like the schools, the schools, the education. Yeah. The, the government has to come in, okay, yeah. and assist the schools. Uh, short term, short term relief. But at the end of the day, everything has got to be with us, the people. What are you celebrating? Okay, opening up the economy and let's start working. Okay, I mean, I know the night economy is, is very effective. I, it's about money, moving, changing hands, drinking and so on. But at the end of the day, what do you get from this opening up the nightclubs? Uh, the issue is working. Okay. Yeah, we have to change actually, okay? We, we have got to relax, we have got to celebrate and... Uh, yeah, but for a short time, but the issue is that people must okay. change mindset, start mm. working. Yes, Prof, what lies ahead? Because uh, I've been following you and uh, there are many lessons I've learned from you in regards to economics. There is this now thing we call the situational poverty. Uh, people, most of them actually, or many of them, there are those who have been unemployed and there are those who are who were un, uh, who were employed before COVID-19 mm. and most of them then lost their jobs. So uh, f the economy is facing such a crisis after the reopening that a lot of people are unemployed right now. Your, yes, you're jeering up for people or you're telling them to go and work and being busy, but uh, Prof, I don't know what lies ahead after everything that has happened, being brought up by COVID-19, companies have cut the numbers of uh, workers, a lot has happened. What lies ahead to you, Prof, in regards to our economy after the reopening? No, I mean, government, seriously. <laughs> The people under planning and the Ministry of Finance, there's this National Planning Authority. Seriously, they have to do something, come up with the appropriate what package, policy package, to stimulate the economy. And one of them is relief, relief packages to some of the what, to some of the sectors. Okay, uh, appropriate allocation of resources. Resources should be going to those areas which are really needed, actually. Okay. Uh, you see, these things are interconnected. Okay, as like I said, the pa even if you have got a good policy package, it will not work unless those things they are talking about are in place. I mean, as long as corruption continues this country, you are not going to get anything new. Okay, whatever good place you are coming up, coming from National Planning Authority, coming from the Ministry of Finance, they will not work unless those things are put in place. Do we have an appropriate conducive environment, working environment? Yes. Mm. If you have it, that's fine. The money which has got to go, I mean, you know, during this COVID period, many people got rich actually. The money, COVID money was misallocated. Things, the United Parties have been coming up and you've been wondering where are they getting the money from? This is corruption. 
So even if you come up with a good policy package, it will not work until those two things are made. Corruption has to stop, and then the government expenditure. I say this with all my heart. There is too much government expenditure on useless things, actually. Okay? So you, you can imagine that uh, all the ministers, MPs, these lady cars, how much money do they take, actually? So what policy are you coming up with to, to overcome the problems of Uganda when you are still doing the same thing? Okay? It will not work. The government expenditure is too much. So... So I always wonder why, why we are even wasting. And did pay MPs know this actually? Okay. So even MPs must have a stand. And this is something, okay? No, I'm not criticizing the government. I mean, they have gone to Congo to fight this ADF, which is a good idea, definitely. And then we have not even explained in the parliament why we went there. Now we are coming for more money. Now, and who can say no? Hardly anybody, okay? So until people... The issue of mindset, change our mindset, the issue of loving our country. People are not patriotic at all, okay? Yes, you, you may talk about going to <laughs> making roads in, in, in Congo, eh, Congo. Very good idea for whatever reason, okay? Yeah, but then the trade you are talking about, things are going to come from the rural areas. The feeder roads are very extremely very bad, okay? So until you do those things, but that's about it. A government expenditure. Where is the money going? Is it going to the right places? Okay. I mean, as I said, we have talked about pineapples, 200 shillings. What? Why are you in government? You are in government to transform the lives of your people in societies. People, we are doing rural areas. The things there are bad, actually. People are really suffering too much, actually. Okay. So it's not enough to talk about infrastructure, infrastructure. Okay. Let's, we in government because of our people. Let's transform the lives of our people.